Hello and welcome to another maintenance blog. This is the third in a series of blogs on how we modified our electrical system on the boat to take a lithium upgrade. In this blog I'll be replacing the old cables with new cables from the inverter charger to the battery bank and I'll also be removing the old AGM Victron batteries. But first let's have a quick update on how things are going. Um, it's not just a, a simple take out and drop in. Our electric system is old, a lot of it needed upgrading even if we weren't putting lithium in. We checked into Red Frog for a month thinking it would be way more time than we need and already that month is up and we still haven't got one battery installed yet. We're already way overdue to get this finished. So uh, the cable has got to be sorted out, the fusing sort of got to be sorted out. The cable run from the battery bank of the engine bay is a nightmare. We're on an island, off an island, off an obscure part of Panama uh, and the electricians who are here are kind of few and far between. If I could have one guy for one day on the boat, I could get it all sorted. So, I mean, you can't moan about it because this is what we want to do. We want to live off grid and part of doing this lithium upgrade is, is about living off grid. And to be honest, if I don't know how it's done, I'm not going to be able to maintain it. So it's a double-edged sword, really. I've already installed the, um, the charger inverter, the relay switch, which needs replacing because apparently it's dangerous. I need to get lots of bus bars. I'm having to order stuff through Amazon, which has to be sent from the United States to a courier in Florida, which then gets taken to Panama City, which then gets trucked up from Panama City to uh, Bocos, which then we've got to get a canoe over to Bastimentos. The supply chain is very, very long and fraught with all sorts of delays if you don't get it right. Can you name the people that have been giving advice? There's a lot of people on the AML forum from some friends actually. There's James Timoney, Dean Gillies, Anton <laughs> Sid from Sailing in Pavidus who've got their own sort of maintenance channel. Jay Perry, these are all experienced electrical engineer guys. I wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. I've basically done the whole diagram and I'm using that to send off to people to ask them to troubleshoot it, reworking it, working out what components I need. The learning curve is massive and steep, but it does mean that I can then maintain it and know exactly what's going wrong and troubleshoot it if it does go wrong. So to get things rolling, I thought I'd start with the smallest and easiest cable, which was the ethernet cable for the VE bus smart dongle. So I'm just feeding the cable for the uh, Victron bus smart dongle and this feeds the information via Bluetooth to uh, my phone. Um, but what I have to do is put the cable, it's an ethernet cable, from the MultiPlus, the charger, all the way to the battery bank because it is also a temperature gauge as well. So uh, it needs to be feeding the information from here and the batteries, which is easier said than done because the cable feed through there is a nightmare. What I didn't realize until I took the step off here was that all of these cables are epoxied in place. Why you'd epoxy it and not put expanding foam or a conduit or anything, I, I just don't know, but it's solid in there. So there's no chance whatsoever of uh, tracing those cables by pulling it. I think a previous owner's drilled a few holes just above the epoxy layer here. I might be able to take out some of those redundant wires and, uh, and mouse this cable through. This is for the uh, VE bus dongle. I've had to basically find a redundant cable and then use that cable as a mousing line to pull through the ethernet cable for the VE smart dongle and uh, cable tie it all the way along uh, into here. So that's a seven meter cable. So as I couldn't pull out the old cables, I had to drill fresh holes above the epoxy layer to run the new 50 millimeter cables through. Okay, pull, excellent, okay. Okay, I have become expert wire puller. Oh, and a piece of uh, thick. So I'm just going to tidy up the ends of these because uh, they've gone through a lot. These lugs are uh, 5 sixteenths. We can jump between European standards and American. I've kind of lost track. I couldn't get hold of any tin wire, but seeing as the old wires, which have been in the boat for 22 years, were still going strong, I figured it wouldn't matter so much as long as I heat shrink the ends really well.
As I noted in the MultiPlus install, the battery shutoff switches are a bit more complicated than would first appear. The positive and negative cables from both the house batteries and starter batteries go through a positive and negative shutoff switch. And both switches are divided into four parts. The top is 12 volt only and deals with the starter battery. The bottom is 24 volt only and deals with the house batteries. The right side is the load side and feeds the boat's electrical system and is cut off when you turn the battery shutoff switch off. The left side is connected directly to the batteries and is not affected by the battery shutoff switch. And it's constantly live, so you have to be really careful when you're dealing with the, the cables, especially when you're fitting them to the MultiPlus. So I had to disconnect the old cables, which were a four org 25 millimeter cable and start replacing them with the one org 50 millimeter cables. So this is a tricky one. I've got to get right down there and take that charging cable off. And that one goes to the MultiPlus, but the cable's too small, so I've got to replace it with the big ones. But there's also uh, some sort of um, shunt on there as well. There's a redundant shunt that goes to the old battery monitor, which no longer works. But it does make it really awkward to try and get off, because I've got to get that one off there. And it's obviously just underneath the positive ones. So I've got to be careful not to arc that with the, uh, with the ratchet spanner. The smaller way is actually wrapped around another one, so I can't actually pull this one out without cutting it. So I can't actually get this cable out. I think what I'm going to do is get a, a meat skewer and just try and make a little bit of a hook for it and try and fish it out that way. Technically, I could just leave them in, but I hate leaving redundant cables in. Ta-da! What an effort. So, I'm just going to do the same with the positive side. I think it's that one. Everything else with enamel is designed to be easily accessed, but this is just ridiculous. Right. Obviously I don't want to cut these too short but I don't want to have loads of cable because these are supposed to be equal length as well so I'll just try and keep them that way. So luckily a, a fellow cruiser had a vice because I need to um, make sort of 45 degree angles on these lugs and uh, luckily I've got a bit of a uh, bit of rod there and it, because these need to fit in the battery shut offs and it's a very tight space in there and then on the other end I find we just go straight into the multi plus so next one is the uh, lugs that I modified earlier one org which is 50 mil Probably a bit oversized for this uh, gauge of wire, but they still work. You always get sparks, and I hate this because uh, 
There's no way of shutting the batteries off at this stage. Ah. Okay, we're on. So one of the problems I've got with the battery bank, the uh, the casing anyway, is this little fella here. It's uh, it's kind of a bar that runs underneath the pilot berth, and I guess it was there to. Uh, keep the batteries securely in place but bearing in mind the batteries would have been put in 25 years ago and obviously technology and sizes have changed since then um, and so the battle bones are just that little bit too high and especially when I'm running cables over them this has got to really squash them flat onto the uh, onto the batteries. I noticed a few people have actually shaved it down but to be honest I think the only thing to do is to take it off it's, it's not really needed um, and it's just going to get in the way and it means I can uh, have a bit more sort of space to to uh, put the cables across the batteries. So what I've done is I've measured how far in that is and uh, I've put a slit down the, this carpeted area because this is glued on, it's, it doesn't come out. So I've put a single slit all the way down the length and it's only held in by four screws luckily. Uh, it's off, it's good, it means I've freed up that space. So I now need to start removing these batteries. This is the actual starter battery. Um, and if I move that to the other side of the bulkhead, I can actually fit another um, lithium in here, so another 24 volt 50 amp hours, which will give me significant more power. Um, but it's a bit tricky because all the wires run over the top of, uh, of this one here, and the positive here is very close to the negative shunt here, and these two are very close together as well. Um, so I've just basically got to kind of move all these wires out of the way and get it out, and then I can start taking these off. This one's a bit tricky. Right, so that's the starter battery disconnected. Now we'll try and get it out. Right, now I've got to try and get this past that. Right, there's no way I'm going to get these out there. These are going to be glued in place, and these are the wrong size lugs anyway for the battery. They should be M8, not M10. So uh, I think it's going to be quicker and easier just cutting them off and then re-threading them. All the cables are different length, which is what we're trying to rectify now with the lithium install. So I'll take this pair off first. Always take the negatives off first. There's chance of sparking. So there's 24, 24, 24, so they're all connected up like this. So now I've disconnected this 24, and now take off the 24 lead, hold them together in parallel, and then I'll take that off and take the batteries out. decades since this has been cleaned out. Where the bus bars are going to be mounted and where these need to be taken out there's already an access hole there for the back of that panel so it might just be a matter of taking these screws out here and uh, saving myself cutting a hole. Sometimes you get lucky and this is one of those occasions. This is the unseen side of doing boat maintenance is just the chaos it creates on board. So our friends on uh, the boat next door, Swift, uh, they were throwing out a battery box which just so happened to be almost the perfect size to fit in the, uh, the well. 
and so it just needed a little trim and uh, I've got to drill a few holes in to get those battery cables through but it means the battery, the starter battery, can move to the other side of the bulkhead and be nicely snug in a proper battery box instead of kind of a makeshift one. So most of the weight has been taken by this bar here which is reinforced with these upstands on both sides and then I'm just putting this across here to support the, uh, the fiberglass battery box. So these are the solar cables from the uh, flexi panels we've got on the deck. Probably don't give much more than one amp, but seeing that there is no lithium setting on it, we just use it as a, a trickle charger for the starter battery. So I'll deal with the engine battery box in another blog uh, because I want to kind of move on towards the lithium install. So now we've got the MultiPlus in place. Um, this one is uh, pretty redundant. So you might have seen the uh, installation video of this I did about two or three years ago. Uh, it was quite a straightforward installation. Um, we could keep using two inverters, but uh, we can use the uh, sale of this to offset the costs of installing the, uh, the rest of the system. It's strange that they've got two positive cables going to two separate terminals. I'm not sure why that is. So even though Battleborn had kindly partnered up with us, we still had to cover the cost of shipping and all of the upgrades needed to our boat, and uh, those costs weren't insignificant at all. So as well as the old inverter, we also sold off the batteries, which weren't all that old to be honest. So thanks for Morgan and Mel for helping us out with the heavy lifting on that one. Don't, don't, no, 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 no. I, I'll put it on here. Yes. Okay. You got it? Yes. Ah, oh, they're so pretty and new. The top camera man. Okay. Okay. Let's see. We're wait. done for now. We'll just put them out okay. here on the deck. Yeah. So in the next episode, we take delivery of our Battleborn lithium batteries and finally get to install them. So thanks for watching and thanks in particular to our patrons who make all of these videos possible. These videos are created on a very tight budget, so if they were in any way helpful to you and you feel like contributing towards the creation of these videos, then you can follow the links to PayPal or Patreon in the description below. Or check out the crew shirts on our merch store.